It is the undisputed ruler of the sky, the pinnacle of fifth generation fighter jet technology, a marvel of engineering that combines stealth, super cruise, super maneuverability, and situational awareness into a single lethal platform. Its name, the F-22 Raptor. It is not just an aircraft, it is the physical manifestation of a doctrine, a philosophy that generations of fighter pilots have dreamed of. First look, first shot, first kill. This is not an empty slogan. It is a design philosophy that rewrites the rules of air combat with every screw, every line of code designed to serve the this purpose. The Raptor was created to detect, target, and destroy its enemy before the enemy is even aware of its existence. However, this overwhelming dominance comes at a price. With a unit cost exceeding $143 million in a multi-billion dollar development program, it is one of the most expensive fighter jets in history. From beginning to end, its program was surrounded by political debates, budget cuts, and harsh criticism. It is both a symbol of American technological power and a painful example of modern military procurement systems. This dilemma lies at the heart of the Raptor's story. The same technological ambition that makes it so superior is also the direct cause of the cost and complexity that make it so controversial. The unique capabilities of this aircraft have fueled the greatest arguments of its critics. To understand the anatomy of this invisible hunter, it is not enough to look beneath its metal and composite fuselage. One must seek its spirit in the crucible of the era in which it was born. Our story begins at a time when the world is on the brink of a different kind of war, when two superpowers challenge each other for dominance of the skies. To understand the Raptor, we must return to the most heated days of the Cold War the late 1970s. The United States Air Force, USAF, was confident in its aerial dominance with the F-15 Eagle. The F-15 was the most capable air superiority fighter ever built up to that time and had never lost an air-to-air -air engagement it had entered. However, behind the Iron Curtain, the Soviet Union was quietly preparing a revolution. The names of this revolution were the Sukhoi Su-27 Flanker and the Mikoyan MiG-29 Fulcrum. This new generation of Soviet fighters shocked Western intelligence agencies. With their extraordinary maneuverability, powerful engines, and advanced sensors, they threatened the F-15's reign. American air superiority was no longer guaranteed. This new threat set off alarm bells in the Pentagon. The Air Force couldn't just build a better aircraft than the F-15. It had to leap a generation forward. The answer to this strategic imperative was the Advanced Tactical Fighter, ATF, program, launched in 1981. The goal was to create an aircraft that would shatter existing paradigms and secure air dominance for the next 50 years. The Request for Proposals, RFP, issued in September 1985 pushed the limits of the aviation industry, demanding a combination of technologies that had never before been brought together. This was to be much more than a fighter jet. It had to be a system of systems. The ATF program had four fundamental pillars. Stealth, with lessons learned from the then still highly classified F-117 Nighthawk program, the new fighter had to be nearly invisible to enemy radar. This would allow it to infiltrate the battle space covertly and catch the enemy by surprise. Supercruise, the aircraft needed to be able to fly continuously at supersonic speeds with a target of Mach 1.4, 1.5 without using fuel-guzzling afterburners. This revolutionary capability would allow the fighter to dictate the time and place of engagement, maintain an energy advantage, and remain in the combat zone for longer. Super maneuverability. If it were forced into a dogfight, it had to be more agile than all existing fighter aircraft. This meant absolute dominance at close range. Integrated avionics. It had to combine data from all the aircraft's sensors, radar, electronic warfare systems, data links, and present it to the pilot on a single, coherent, and integrated display. This would reduce the pilot's workload, maximize situational awareness, and shorten the decision-making process to mere seconds. The plan was extremely ambitious. To procure 750 ATF aircraft at a cost cost of $35 million per unit in 1985 dollars. The Cold War threat that inspired the program's birth came to an unexpected end in the early 1990s, just as the ATF prototypes were taking to the sky. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the primary adversary for which the F-22 was designed had vanished. This situation caused the aircraft to suffer from a justification problem throughout its program life. Its unique and expensive capabilities were seen as excessive and unnecessary for the asymmetric warfare environments of the 1990s and 2000s. This perception led to dramatic cuts in the planned procurement numbers, from 750 to 648, then to 442, and ultimately to a much smaller fleet. At the moment of its birth, the F-22 was a Cold War warrior, forced to adapt to a new world. This process of adaptation would shape its entire story. The ATF program became the stage for one of the greatest competitions in aviation history. From seven bidders, two heavyweight teams were selected in 
in 1986 to build the prototypes that would determine the future of the skies. This was a battle not just between two aircraft, but between two different engineering philosophies and corporate cultures. On one side was the YF-22, developed by a consortium of Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics. On the other stood the radically designed YF-23 Black Widow II, a product of the Northrop and McDonnell Douglas partnership. The YF-23 was the product of a philosophy that prioritized stealth and speed above all else. It possessed an almost otherworldly appearance, with its distinctive diamond-shaped wings and V-shaped tails, rudder vaders that replaced traditional vertical and horizontal stabilizers. It was a design entirely focused on stealth. On paper, it had several advantages over its rival. It was faster, had a longer range, and a higher service ceiling. It was claimed to be more invisible to infrared sensors, particularly thanks to its exhaust design that masked its heat signature. However, this radical design came at a cost. The YF-23 lacked the thrust vectoring system that was its rival's greatest trump card and relied entirely on its advanced aerodynamic surfaces for maneuverability. The YF-22, on the other hand, represented an evolutionary revolution. Although its design resembled a more conventional fighter, the technology under its hood was groundbreaking. The YF-22's philosophy was based on absolute agility. While still an extremely stealthy aircraft, its main trump card was its two-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzles, which could change the direction of the engine exhaust. This technology promised it incredible maneuverability. Lockheed's bet was that if it ever entered close-range combat, the YF-22 would defeat any opponent with moves that defied the laws of physics. In 1990, the two Titans faced off in the skies above California's Mojave Desert. Throughout the testing process, the YF-22's demonstration was described as more aggressive and showy. Lockheed test pilots pushed the aircraft into maneuvers up to 9 Gs and, most importantly, successfully fired an AIM-9 Sidewinder and an AIM-120 AMRA-AM missile from its internal weapons bays, something not required by the program, proving the integrity of its systems. The YF-23 team took a more conservative approach and did not conduct a live-fire test. This reinforced the perception that the YF-22 was a more mature and less risky project. In April 1991, the decision was announced. The winner was the YF-22. The Air Force's official statement noted that the YF-22 offered better capability at a lower cost, and that the Lockheed team's credibility in managing such a complex program was higher. Following its victory, the YF-22 underwent significant changes on its path to serial production. This process is known as Engineering and Manufacturing Development. EMD. The resulting F-22A Raptor was more refined and more lethal than the prototype. The sweep angle of the wing's leading edge was reduced from 48 degrees to 42 degrees, the vertical stabilizers were moved back and their area was reduced by 20%, and the canopy was moved forward 18 centimeters to improve the pilot's visibility. The first EMD model of this state-of-the-art war machine took to the skies on September 7, 1997. There are four fundamental technological pillars that define the F-22 Raptor. Each of these pillars is revolutionary in its own right, but their true power comes from the synergy they create by complementing each other. This is the anatomy of a hunter. For more videos like this, you can support me by liking the video and subscribing.